Welcome into today's show. I'm joined by Ryan Lane. He's the founder and owner of Lane's Barbecue. And a quick shout out to my good friend, Tony McGee at Why Not Georgia Barbecue for connecting us. Make sure you check out Tony and everything he's doing for Georgia Barbecue over at Why Not Georgia Barbecue on Facebook and Instagram. All right, so let's get down into it. Ryan, first, thanks for joining us on the show. Absolutely, man. It's a pleasure. Thank you for having us. All right. So the journey question is the big one that I always like to dive into and really just chat about. So how did this barbecue journey start for you? Well, I would say mine kind of started different from normal as that it started out of insurance. So insurance business was was kind of like the the crazy road. But uh, I worked, my brother started an insurance brokerage about 15 years ago, maybe 16 years ago. I worked with him for five years uh, absolutely love the relational aspect, working with my brother, working with small businesses. We worked with small to mid-sized companies doing group health benefits. Um, and then, uh, it just, I don't know what it was. I, I absolutely hated the insurance piece, but I've always loved, uh, food and just serving people. And one thing that, you know, does light people up is when you walk in with a tray of barbecue. And so, uh, what we started doing is we closed a big account, bought a pull behind smoker, and we started. I would stay up, be the smoker all night, cook brisket, ribs, pork, and sides, and then we would go into the meeting, feed them barbecue. They'd be all fat and happy and ready to roll, and then I'd check out and let my brother check in. And so uh did that for a little while and just realized, man, I just, I was, the problem is I was comfortable. Uh, married. So I've been married now for 21 years, almost 21 years, two kids, 16 and 14. They were about uh, five and three at the time. We had a book of business. I was comfortable, but like miserable. Like I wasn't miserable in what I was doing. I just knew that I needed to be doing something else. So I love that. So, so tell me about your mindset though, right? Because there's a lot of folks out there that that have that same mentality. They know they need to be doing something else, but the problem is they never take the leap. Yeah. So I had an awesome support system. So my brother was like, right. I know, like, I love working with you and this is a great thing. However, this is not what you're meant to do. Like you don't smile. Like I've always been just a happy go lucky kind of guy. And it's, <laughs> it's hard to be happy and go lucky when you're talking about insurance though. And so I tried to find that mix and just knew that, you know, it was going to take, take more than that. I needed to like, so I needed a tangible product that I could prepare and serve. And so, and that's really, it took a little bit of time to convince my wife. So she's a school teacher, uh, two young kids walking away from a book of business. And I just caught her on a good day after just pestering <laughs> her for a couple years and um, said, Hey, I really want to give this a shot. And she's like, fine, just go do it. And so there was a produce stand in Loganville that we used to go to every Sunday after church. And uh, I went over there and said, Hey man, any chance I could come sell barbecue here? And he's like, yeah, you can. He said, but it better be good. And you better not sell out really fast. And I was like, okay, I doubt we're going to sell out. Right. And so he's like, and can you be here this Saturday? I was like, all right, so we're we're jumping right in. And so I was like, fine, we'll do it. And so figured out this social media piece. So I I went on, created a Facebook account, really got going. And then that's really where it kind of took off and just friends and family. And that's not to sidetrack, but that's really what the barbecue family kind of is, um, is just a huge support system. And so... That was it, man. Went out that first Saturday. We sold out in a couple hours and I almost like went in to see Dave, like disappointed. Like, I'm so sorry. And he's like, can you please come back next weekend? Every single person that came to you came into our store and bought something and everyone was happy. Everyone was talking about it. And it created that buzz. He was like, I don't care if you sell out, like bring people our way. And that's kind of just morphed into catering. Catering worked into the the seasoning business and and that's kind of where we are today. So what was this timeline like? So when did, when you made this jump, how many years, when was this? What time? Yeah, so it started selling on the side of the road in 2013. So it was October. So it's been almost, uh, almost 10 years now, which is yep. crazy. Um, went part-time 
uh, in January of 14 in the insurance and then went full on in in February of 14. So we fully incorporated February 2014 and uh, been rolling since. And so I love that progression. You know, you started on literally selling barbecue on the side of the road. And then, of course, added in some catering because the demand was there. Mm -hmm. And then it's now you've got, you know, a full line of rubs and, and spices and, you know, all kinds of all kinds of fun stuff. And, and that's actually a good time to just mention, you know, for our listeners, make sure you do check out Lane's Barbecue on Facebook Instagram, TikTok as well. Are you guys on TikTok? Yeah, absolutely. We're trying on TikTok. So L A N E S B B Q. That's where you can find them and see all the cool stuff that they are doing. So let's chat about, you know, when you started, because I'm I'm curious about this, because again, I know, you know, a lot of folks have different paths into the barbecue. Yeah. Um, you know, for us as an example, I, I've just always loved it you know, what I thought was a good barbecue, you know, we always think we got great barbecue at the house, right. Until, until we start charging people money for it. And then they, they actually tell us what they really think. Um, so, uh, but, um, you know, our, our journey was more, you know, I just decided to get into the competition world. Yeah. And we've now started offering catering because we, there's a demand for it. I'm curious from your standpoint, you know, when you, when you went from catering to, you know, not to use a cliche overused term here, but leveling up uh, to the, you know, to the, to products, you know, yeah. not just, not just food. What was that? What was the mindset? Like, what was the, what was the, you know, what was going through your head at that point to make that jump? So it was a couple of things. Um, real first, let me take a step back to, I, I think the reason why I love your podcast is because the competition side is something we never did. We did a couple competitions. Um, but it was something like when I started catering, I was like, man, we need to make money. The competitions, I was just spending money and I wasn't any good at it. And so I wasn't making money. Um, but I think there was always that part, like just the camaraderie and just the weekends filled with just like, I don't know, man, I, I love barbecue guy. Like just the barbecue family to me is so special. Um, and so I love that that's how you guys started and that's really a lot of the big guys in in our business in the seasoning and sauce business kind of got their start there and our story is a little bit different but that's what i love about everyone's story but um yeah so we started with the catering and at that point in time it was just me um so i knew that i had to bootstrap this thing and and get it going and so from the side of the road to the catering and really the rubs was more of a way to um, figure out a way to make some other income where I could take a breather. Like it was 80 hour weeks and just going nonstop. And the problem is I was so committed to this thing that I would have ran myself into the ground yep. to prove to everyone that I could do it. Yep. Um, but a year and a half in, I needed a breather. I needed, um, I just needed to spend some time with my family and just recharge. And so after being on social media for, a little bit i noticed that there was just this market there for seasoning sounds like we've already got great flavors our customers love it so we can start with four different ones um we'll just kill it with customer service and just communication and uh i remember i came home and i was like all right stace and she always knows anytime i come home i'm like hey stace and she's like oh gosh what's again <laughs> i was like i've done the math i think for about two thousand dollars i can start we can create four flavors or labels, get the ingredients, get everything going. Uh, I'll pull it out of the business account so you don't have to worry about it. And uh, she's like, you are an idiot. Absolutely no one is going to do this. And I still joke about it to this day, but I'm like, challenge accepted. Like all I need sometime is just that little voice. And she didn't mean it in a negative way. She was just like, I don't see it. But, you know, I was like, like okay, well, then we're going to figure out a way to make this thing work. So, and that was kind of it. We, you know, we started and I brought in uh, one of my best friends, uh, Brian Turner. I knew that I couldn't do the catering and the seasonings at the same time. And so that's really when we started, you know, he was kind of like our, the, well, he was the first one, but kind of the foundation uh, in building the team. And so it's, it's kind of just been on from there. I love that. And so with the, with that jump into the, you know, the rub world yeah. and leveraging social media, how did you go about, you know, growing 
or branding. And I'm, and I'm asking that question because one thing I, I realized very early on in the more so the competition world yeah. was that branding was really an afterthought. Mm-hmm. You know, social media was really just an afterthought. And I think in your case, you know, you, you recognize that early on and leverage that to your advantage, right? Well, Even though we all know social media can be a bit painful sometimes. Yeah, um, absolutely. So I would say our business is a hundred percent here because of social media. So um, the power of Instagram, and it's a little bit different now than it was seven, eight years ago, as mm-hmm. far as like influencers uh, at that time, no one was really, they weren't paid to say they liked your stuff. And so it was more, um, you send them something with, Hey, if you like it and you want to say something, that's great. If you don't, we would love feedback, whether it is, you know, the product, the flavors, you know, and our rubs weren't on, like they weren't necessarily competition style rubs. So when I think competition, I think of like a little finer, you know, like you're going for the color and everything where ours were a little bit more texture. Right. Um, and so it, it was more or less, we're just backyard barbecue guys. Like yep. that's it. And so I tried to find other people like that, that were just passionate about it. And at the end of the day, like social media is really just a way to kind of flex in front of your friends anyways. <laughs> and so it was, you know, it was the perfect, it was the perfect Avenue, but without it, we probably wouldn't have business in Australia and Canada and Europe. Like it just, it, all those things were, <laughs> what's crazy. were all messages from, like Instagram, like direct messages. So right. it just came from just building, I don't know, like just building, building the base. So where do you see this? And, and just in your mind, I mean, where do you see this going longer term? Are you, are you looking at adding locations? Uh, are you looking at adding different, you know, different products other than, other than rubs to your line? I mean, what are your thoughts there? Yeah. So, well, we, so we've got two different kind of sides of the business. So lanes, we produce, you know, we've got a line of seasonings, um, sauces, brines, smoked salts kind of thing. And then we have a co-packing side of the business. So we've got about 20, 25 different clients that we pack for as well. And so that's really kind of, you know, the business I, I would love to just keep it like that focus our, the past two years, our focus has been more on the Lanes brand. We love all our clients that we work with. I don't mean it in a negative way, but I think for a little time there, we got out of that and just focusing on everyone else. And so we've kind of come back around. We don't, we don't advertise that we do it, but anytime someone knows there's a need and they'll call, we'll help out if we can. Well, I'm, I'm glad to know that you guys do that because you may be getting a call from me because I am uh, already thinking about how we can you know, t- same similar thought process that you had in 2013, 2014, how to yeah. add in those, those other layers of, of, you know, additional income streams. One, one question though, that does come to mind. That's something I've, I've struggled with, right. Is separation. How do you separate yourself in what is now a very crowded, you know, world of sauces and rubs and, you know, the celebrity, uh, uh, pit masters uh, have, have their lines of stuff. So how did you, how, how do you continue to separate yourselves? Because you guys continue to, to remain, you know, at, at the forefront, right? I mean, I'm in the Augusta, Georgia area. I see your stuff everywhere. I mean, literally. Yeah. You know? so, so you're, you're right there with rec tech. So rec tech is one of our largest clients. We love those guys. And I would say, what they're doing is kind of what our focus was. And it's really like, it's just, I don't know, it's passion and people like we absolutely love what we do. And the truth is like, if we're being honest, like we're really just selling salt and sugar, you know what I mean? So (laughs) there's only so many ways you can mix it up. However, there's, you know, I mean, what we try to do is really provide like people remember how you make them feel. You know what I mean? And so it's like, we want them to be the hero of their backyard. It's not about us. And so that's really our focus is what can we provide besides the flavor profile? So our focus is recipes and videos and content. How can, especially during COVID, the past two and a half years have been crazy. And just everyone being at home, 
I think they learned to love to cook and serve again. You know, instead of going out and getting served, everyone like got this bug to like just start cooking. And so our goal was, all right, how can we provide as much help as we can, you know, to, to make them the hero of their backyard? You know, I love that. So you keep it others focused and there's, you know, there's a lot of different ways to say it, but if you, if you help others get what they want in the long run, you know, you'll absolutely get, get what you want. You know, the whole helping, you know, helping others climb, et cetera. And you hit the nail right on the head. And I think that's an interesting approach because I've heard, you know, I ask that question anytime I meet somebody that has branched off and created rubs and sauces and other products. One of the main things I hear is, well, you know, we separate ourselves by, you know, we've got this ingredient and it's more of an ingredient conversation yeah. versus a, well, we're just, we're really just focused on the people. We're focused on the service because to your point, at the end of the day, you know, I'd say 99% of the, the rubs out there pretty much all have the same stuff in it. I mean, it, different. Salt and sugar. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, Salt and sugar. Like, yeah. Maybe yeah, pepper. I'm not taking away from what we do. Our team is incredible in, in R&D and making different flavors. But at the end of the day, it's about the smiles, like, yep. on everyone's face. Like, really, the way I see it is, like, if we can, like, our mission is gathering families around tables. And the only way to do that is make them the hero of their barbecue, not us. Thank you me. know what I mean? And so it's always from day one, it, that's what it's been about. And, and like, man, there's so many great people in this business. And, like, I'll be honest, I'm a barbecue fan. I've got everyone else's rubs in my pantry just because yep. like, I don't know. I just, that's how it started. Like I loved like, you know, when we started out, like Matt Pittman was really getting into it and meat church was huge. Cosmos was huge. And so like, I'm a fan of barbecue. Right. And so, you know, I'll, I'll be the first to say like, I love their stuff. I love what they're doing, their approach to marketing. Um, there's just so many different ways to do it. And so the way I see it is, there's a bunch of people out there and like, you know, there's room for, for everyone. And I love the fact that you're thinking about getting into it. Like that's incredible. I think it's just an opportunity to show good food and good flavors to more people. That's exactly right. That's a great, that's a great lead into the, to the next thing I wanted to, to chat about. And that has to do with, you know, if we look back over the last several years with the, with COVID, you know, a lot of restaurants are no more. You know, yeah. they're, they're empty, they're closed up. Uh, and so, and of course, on the competition side, you know, it's, I, I don't think it's any secret, but competitions have been hurting over the last yeah. few years. COVID really exacerbated that problem. Uh, but my question would really centers around, you know, how do we keep this thing going? You know, I'm, I'm 39 years old. I don't plan on stopping anytime soon. And one of my big missions is to make sure that you know, I'm helping the next generation learn how to how to barbecue, learn how to cook, right? Because you you, you made a great point. You know, COVID basically forced you to cook. <laughs> you you couldn't you couldn't go anywhere. So yeah. you either got better at cooking or you learned how to cook. Um, and so one one question that that I'm curious about is what what can we do, right? What can we do? that we're not already doing. And when I say we, I'm talking about the barbecue fanatics. I consider myself a barbecue fanatic. Yeah. Don't necessarily, they don't have to be a competition team. You just have to love barbecue. What can right. the barbecue fanatics do proactively to continue to grow barbecue in general, right? I'm curious, yeah. what, what's your take on that? I don't know, man. I think that's actually a, a great question. And I think, you know, we all live kind of as much as we want to spread out and do things, we all live in our little pods, you know, right. um, like Augusta and Bethlehem feel like miles away, you know, it's two, two and a half hours. But I think it's just, man, like what I love is the people who are in this business are so passionate and I think it's just infectious. I think as long as we never lose the love for what we're doing, like people are going to want to be a part of it. And over the past two, two and a half years, it's just sparked that even more. And it's what sucks is like the restaurants that haven't made it through, but the ones that were able to kind of like pivot and we're seeing a bunch come back, which is really cool. Um, and they're coming back and they're trying new things. I was out in, um, in Texas, uh, probably a couple months ago, doing the the Texas monthly thing, I was out there with a buddy of mine, uh, Stephen Hartsock, and Jonathan Wilson. They both have restaurants, one in Texas and one in uh, Cumming, Georgia, which is 
not too far from you. Uh, but just, man, I don't know. It's it, There's like a buzz around it. And it's just something where, and I always look at myself, I'm like, I'm the dork of barbecue. There are some like super cool people out there. But at the end of the day, like I am, am who I am. And you know what? Like not everyone, you know what I mean? The way I see it, not everyone's going to like you. They're not going to like your food, but make them feel something. And I think if you can do that, you can capture them and then they're going to catch the bug and pass it on. And that's really our goal is like, man, we, we hope that everyone loves us and we want to be the best, but we, we don't want to remain the best. We want to pass on everything we know. So the next generation is even better, you know? And that's really the goal. You're you're exactly right. And I think, you know, it's with, with barbecue, one of the beautiful things I love about it is there's really no right or wrong way to do it. Yeah. That's what we tell people in the beginning, like, hey, there's a hundred ways to do this. And right. the truth is like ours is right for us, but yours is gonna be right for you, you know? And I say, find what works for you and go with it. So Tell us about your your setup, and, I, and I'll start with the Kate. When you first started catering, what what were yeah. you cooking on? Were you cooking on you know offset stick burner, or what what was your setup like? Yeah, so we started on offset stick burner. Uh, that lasted for about five months, and I was like, there is no way I can keep this going. And then I ended up with uh, five extra large big green eggs, which I think might have been a dumber setup than the the you know the offset. Um, and then now we use an old hickory. And so we've got a, I think a EX, EDL, um, but we can do, you know, probably 30, 35 briskets at a time. So it's, it's fuel and, and logs so that we can throw in there. But for us, it was more of like, we can set it and forget it. But catering is actually a, you know, it's a smaller piece for us. So we're not, we're not spending a ton of time doing i wish we could do more of it but the other the manufacturing side of it whips our tails so. well i would assume too that you know obviously there's a lot of work to be done on the r d side and setting up the manufacturing process etc but once it's set up fairly it's you know it's fairly uh what's the word on cruise control right it's it's it doesn't require as much sweat equity so to speak as you know catering would i I would love to say that. However, <laughs> so we've got the full automation on the on the rub side and almost full automation on the soft side, but it's um and there's a lot of moving pieces. So it's it's a lot of you've got a lot of people, so we've got about 30 people um at our space over in Winder. It's just a lot of really I would say moving parts. Uh and sometimes I long just to be over in the smokehouse. Right. Uh, and really, it's what I, I tell Stacy. I'm like, you know, I just wanted to sell briskets. Like, that's kind of what I wanted to do. And I think that's where my heart and my passion always is. And so some like I have to intentionally come back around to, hey, there's other responsibilities now. And so um, every now and then we do Friday morning biscuits, too. And so that's where I get to go on Friday mornings to kind of like just hang out. It's a different team over there. And it's just a, it's a different feel and I love it. So we get to do, I'm actually, I'm making cinnamon rolls this Friday and then we'll do the brisket biscuits. So it's a way to kind of connect on both ways. Get my, I love that. So let's talk about control. Here's something I struggle with, you know, um, giving up, giving up some of that control, right. Delegating that to someone else. How did that go? How was, how easy was that for you to give up some of that pit master control, et cetera, as things begin to, you know, begin to grow. Yeah. So luckily the guy that took it over is my best friend. And so there was a lot of trust already there. Right. Um, But I would say it wasn't easy, but the more I gave up, the more I realized like I can't do it all anyways. And in fact, they do it way better than me because I was trying to juggle too many things. So it's what a lot of people, if you have a great team, like, they're going to be way better than you are. Um, And so that's ultimately what I had to kind of take a step back and realize like we've been blessed with some amazing talent. And so I'm an idiot if I don't give up that control and and let it do it. And then I can focus on what I need to focus on. So it sounds like you're more of the, it now you're more of the visionary. Is that a fair? 
Yeah, yeah, probably, but I probably drink too much, you know, and so it's like a clouded, clouded vision, you know. It's a clouded, it's a cloud. (laughs) (laughs) That's right. So now I'm trying to align the uh, the focus and the vision, but yeah, I would say so. Yeah, and that's that's you know, the trust thing you hit on is is so so important. Having that established on the front end is, I mean, it's priceless because you know, for me, you know, I struggle with giving up that giving up that control, um, because I, I'm, I'm naturally type A OCD, you know, yeah. very process oriented, as you could imagine with a competition guy, right. Just very, oh, yeah. you know, um, but yeah, that's something I struggle with is how do I go about, cause I'm, I'm very similar to you and that I, you know, I have these big ideas and I just go do it. And then it either works out wonderfully or completely, I completely fall on my face. Yeah. Um, but whatever it happens. Well, the way uh, I see it is, and I fail a lot, but I really look more to like, if you're not trying, you're already failing. So, you know, it's, it's, you can say I, I give it up. And then sometimes I realize like I've tried to give up control, but I actually still have a pretty tight grip on it. And luckily I've got people around me that'll check me and be like, Hey, Rye, like step away. <laughs> I promise away. we have this. You know, and then I can go do what I'm supposed to do. So, so you talked earlier about you know helping others become you know the masters of their backyard barbecue. Yeah. Essentially, yeah. I think that's a great it's a great segue into you know just chatting about some helpful advice for those folks because we have a lot of different listeners. We have listeners that you know want to get into competitions. We have listeners that say you know what I don't care about competitions. I just want to be the best barbecue on my block. Yeah. So you've mentioned brisket a couple of times. So I'm going to go out on a limb here and assume that that is your favorite thing to cook. Yeah. So brisket or beef ribs, but yeah, man, I I love, I love both of those, but brisket, I think has always been. So when we started catering, um, you know, traditional Georgia barbecue has kind of always been pulled pork or chopped pork and, you know, and chicken. And I was like, you asked earlier how you separate yourself. That's kind of how we did in the beginning on the food side. Um, and and it's always, I don't know, man, it was always that challenge that I just loved it. And I love the fact that you could do a hundred of them. They were great. And then you'd get one and no matter, you did the same thing and it cannot turn out the way you want it to. And so it's always that challenge. Like you're always kind of perfecting it and adjusting. And I think that's that's one of my favorite things about barbecue. And that's what I always tell People like there's so much content that you can consume. Mm -hmm. And so it's like, hey, make sure while you're consuming this, like you're still who you want to be and you're not trying to just emulate someone else. Like, do you like your family wants the best of what you have? And so that's that's what I want to like more or less for people to kind of go out and, and do themselves. I love that. So with brisket now, brisket is 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 my favorite cut to cook. I love it. I would agree that, you know, in, in our area, very similar to your area, it's more pork. Yeah. You know, brisket is just not, it, it's, I don't know how else to say it. It's not very good in our area. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so, um, but for the, for the, for the backyard guy, for the guy that's just trying to cook a brisket at their house, I get a lot of questions about it because it is a big cut of meat. It is, you know, it's an expensive cut of meat and yep. they don't want to mess it up. And from your standpoint, if you're talk if you're talking to a backyard guy who's trying to be the king of their cul-de-sac, what's some helpful tips when they're cooking brisket that they can act on immediately? So depending on what kind of smoker they're they're cooking with, but I would say we 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 just simply season it. It's salt, pepper, garlic. Yep. I would say a lot of times people want to do way too much to it just mm-hmm. to kind of cover up any mistakes they made. But I would say keep it simple. Keep it simple. And then the key is like getting it to the right temp. So we cook them to about 202. But then everyone wants to dive right in. Like the most important piece is at the very end, and that's the rest. And if you don't let it rest, it's still like all seized up. And so even if it's like cooked to the right temp, it's still like got to chill out. And that's what I tell people like, look, you already spent all the money. You bought rubs that you put on it. You smoked it. You invested 10 to 12 hours into this thing. Start early, let it rest, and I promise it'll be awesome. Most time, people like wait till the last minute 
So there are families sitting around waiting. And so they pull it early, rip into it, and it's just it, it's just tight. And so you just got to let it chill out. I love it. Keep it simple. SPG, let it rest. That's a big one. You're right. A lot of people miss that part. Yeah. Uh, it's it's almost like they're on the goal line and they fumble the football, right? It's yeah, for real. They're right there, and then it's boom, a fumble at the at the one foot line. So and it's because they give into the pressure. Like their families all gathered around. I'm like, hey, like sit back, fellowship. Like give it about two hours, and we'll be ready. You know, like the barbecue's ready when the barbecue's ready. That's right. Don't don't rush good barbecue or great barbecue, I should say. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, I've enjoyed the conversation. And again, for our listeners, we're chatting with uh, Ryan Lane, owner and founder of Lane's Barbecue. Make sure you check them out and all the cool stuff they are doing. Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, at Lane's Barbecue. Uh, their website, I believe, is lanesbbq.com. Is that correct? That's right. You can check them out there. Um, and so you, you can tell that uh, Ryan is a, is a wealth of knowledge and I'm sure wouldn't wouldn't hesitate to, to point folks in the right direction if you reached out and, and connected. So take the time to do that. Ryan, we appreciate you being on the show. Enjoy the conversation and uh, look forward to making a trip one day and trying some Lane's Barbecue. Yeah, man. You are most welcome anytime. Kurt, this was a pleasure. Thanks so much for, for just the chance to come on and speak. 